Hey everybody, it's April Henry again. I think I'm finally getting the hang of this new Facebook Live, which means of course that they will change it soon. So um, I am back again uh, talking about writing. You can catch all my previous videos on aprilhenry.com or on my YouTube channel, which is also called April Henry. My plan is to talk every day at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time until I run out of topics. So um, I'm wearing another Jiu-Jitsu Rash card. I really like this one. It's kind of got a tribal pattern. It's another YM one, another one that I bought off eBay because, as you guys know, I am cheap. So um, I'm also wearing some uh, cheap-ish uh, lip, lip stuff I bought that said it was like moisturizing. So um, today I'm going to talk about books for a little bit, and then I'm going to talk about how to turn up the tension. Tomorrow is uh, um, an Ask Me Anything. So if you want to ask me anything, um, go ahead and ask me at any point. And I'm going to try and get to Kara Black's question today, though. So, but first, books. Uh, this book, Plots Unlimited, used to be part of a computer program. It was also called Plots Unlimited. It was so old, it probably ran on little floppy disks. But, um, I used to brain, so I used to brainstorm by reading through this book and um, looking at different things. Like uh, it, it divides all plots into little sections. So one might say, Jack conceals his ruthless and ethical nature behind a respectable facade. And I would read through the book a few pages at a time. And I would think, huh, could my character be hiding behind a respectable facade. Now what these people never said was their book was pretty much a, a blatant ripoff of a book called Plato that was, um, I think it was out of print and not under copyright. It's the exact same thing. So, um, uh, and so I bought a copy of it because I felt like I should give, uh, it was reissued by um, Tin House and I felt like I should own the real thing. So I don't do it as much anymore, but I used to um, page through here when I was stuck and I needed something to unjam my thinking about a plot. So speaking of plots, the way that you're gonna keep your readers uh, reading and turn up the tension is, um, is that you are uh, think of ways to, um, to make them keep on reading. So Kara Black, uh, who's a wonderful mystery writer, asked me about how do you not make it seem like too much? And so your character has to be acting to reach his goal. He can't just be passive. And everything he tries, though, can't work and ideally will bring him more trouble. So if you look at that Jesse uh, Pinkman from Breaking Bad in the example that I gave yesterday, um, he uh, he's kicked out of his house, so his goal is to find a place to stay. So what would somebody do in that situation? He tries calling his partner who hangs up. So that's just a basic no. He goes to a friend who says, yes, you can stay. And then the friend's wife comes home and is like, no, I don't want Jesse staying here. Um, he rides his bike to a payphone and he leans his bike against the wall. And then when he's on the payphone, he turns around and sees someone stealing his bike. So again, that is something that he did, wasn't visited upon him. Um, he's trying to solve his problem. And then finally he goes to the impound lot where his motor home is and he decides that, oh, he could stay in there. And he climbs over the fence, picks the spot where there's a porta potty on the other side and jumps on the roof of the porta potty and it collapses. In each of those things, Jesse is making decisions that turn out to be bad ones, but he's not being passive. And if you are faced with something where you need the character to get in more trouble, what you could do is set a timer for a very small amount of time, like five minutes or even three minutes, write as fast as possible about all the ways he could uh, get out of there, get out of his mess or pursue his goal that he has. The first few things you write down are gonna be cliche. And maybe the last, will be outlandish but somewhere in the middle you're going to find some things that are interesting that you wouldn't have thought of and um, then you might strike gold 
So I'm going to talk for another five minutes or so about other ways that you can turn up the tension. Then I'll stop and I will have an Ask Me Anything Friday and resume more tension talk on Monday. So um, one way is to play on universal fears. There's things that almost all of us are afraid of. We're afraid of being hurt, of darkness, of wild storms, of something, feeling something crawling on your skin. Um, objects that are covered by other objects, being alone, being helpless or unable to act, um, something under the bed, closed or even partially open doors that you can't see past, hallways or tunnels that lead to the unknown, um, cramped spaces, uh, dark basements, attics, uh, heights, Crowds, especially now, crowds will be a very scary thing. End times, disease, death. Those are all things we're afraid of. So how can you work those fears um, into your book? I also think another way to turn up the tension is to end each chapter with an unresolved issue. Have a character open a door, answer the phone, and be confronted by somebody with a uh, gun, open a mysterious letter, make a decision, but whatever you do, don't reveal immediately what happens next. Es especially if you are changing points of view from chapter to chapter, it's time to switch to a different points of view. Leave your reader hanging for a little bit. Another thing is to have an uh, overarching unresolved issue. Maybe your main character was given up for adoption and would love to find their birth parents. Um, maybe they failed at an important task in the past, just something that kind of hangs over them and colors everything. Another way to uh, turn up the tension is to hurt a main character. Do it early so that um, the reader knows that nobody is safe and then they're going to be uh, they're going to be nervous. It also helps to make one character especially violent. One who you know, the reader knows, is not going to respect um, things that would normally keep somebody from being extremely violent. Um, even better, kill somebody off. I mean, of course, this is that's probably for a mystery, but if you kill off someone, especially a likable character that your reader was thinking was safe, then they're going to know that nobody is safe, that anything at all could happen. I really love uh, the first of Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin, both the book and the TV show. There is a character that I was convinced was the main character who dies. And I remember thinking, well, it's all a trick. It's going to be revealed they secretly had an identical twin or that there was some kind of uh, faint and it just looks like they're dead, but they're not really dead. And guess what? They were dead. And it made it so that I got worried about every single other character in the book. Um, I like to make things as bad as possible for my characters. Um, multiply the bad things that are happening to them and see what they do in response. So do you ask yourself, what would make it worse? And then make it happen, even sometimes if you do not know how your character will get out of it. Um, I have had good success Googling things like how to move around in handcuffs or what to do if you're drowning. Um, I also like those worst case scenario books where they um, they're really popular, probably like 20 years ago. They, they would take something like what to do if your car brakes fail. I will leaf through those sometimes and think, is this something I could have happen to my character? Because the nice thing about it, not only is it some terrifying scenario, but it also has um, some ideas of what you could do to get out of it. So um, another thing that, but actually I think I'm gonna end there because the next one's kind of clump together. So we're now through number 21. I will talk about the next ones, I guess, Monday and Tuesday, because um, I think it's gonna run two more days. And, uh, I'm going to go see if I can find some hand sanitizer at a bar that I heard is selling some. So I hope you guys have an equally exciting day and I, I'll see you tomorrow for an Ask Me Anything. Bye-bye.